Hello humans, my name is Kayo and Overload, and today I will show you how you can install and use the latest AI model inside Stable Diffusion called Instruct Pix to Pix. So what exactly is Instruct Pix to Pix? Well, it's a new AI model that was created by merging a GPT-3 language model and a Stable Diffusion image model. All of that to create a revolutionary combo. And basically, this new model allows you to very easily transform and edit any image you want into anything you want, just by writing a simple instruction, exactly as if you were using ChatGPT. So no need to have any stable diffusion prompting knowledge to use, it's really, really easy. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can download it and use inside your stable diffusion web UI. So let's go. And to be able to use the pix to pix model, you first need to update stable diffusion to its latest version. And to do this, you have two ways. Either you come here in the folder URL and type cmd and press enter, and then you're gonna type git pull and then press enter. And this command will update stable diffusion to its latest version. Or you can right click on the web UI user bat file, click on edit with notepad, and here on the call web UI bat, you're gonna type git pull and then save the file. And this way, each time that you launch Stable Diffusion, it will update automatically. Now, I know that a lot of you do not like this way, I absolutely understand, because it is true that some Stable Diffusion updates can break some of the things inside the UI, which is why I'm also gonna give you a trick. If, for example, you make an update, and you don't like the update, and you want to go back to a previous version, here's what you can do. First, you're gonna click here on the follow URL, and type cmd, press enter, and in the command prompt window, you're gonna type git log minus one and press enter. And what you see right here, this string of character, this is the hash of the current version that you're using right now. So just in case, you can copy the string of text, so control C, and you can paste it somewhere else, and then you're gonna type git log and then press enter. And now you will see a bunch of different versions of Stable Diffusion. These are all the previous updates for Stable Diffusion. And if you want to see even earlier updates, you can press enter and keep pressing enter, you will see more and more and more updates. And once you find an update that you like, let's say for example I want to revert back to this version, I'm gonna select the string of text, control C to copy it, then again we're gonna bring back the command prompt window, and now we're gonna type git checkout, and then you gotta paste the string of text right here, and then press enter. And as you can see, now we are using an older version of stable diffusion. And you can do that with any version of the update. And now, if you want to go back to the main latest version of Stable Diffusion, all you have to do is just type git checkout master and then press enter. And now we are back again at using the latest version of Stable Diffusion. So use this trick next time that you want to go back to an older version of Stable Diffusion whenever there is a new update that you don't like. So now that we updated Stable Diffusion, we need to download the pix to pix model. And for this, you're gonna click the link in the description down below, you're gonna arrive on this page, you're gonna scroll down, and you're gonna click on Instruct pix to pix Save Tensors, and then click on Download. Now this might take you some time to download, since this is an almost 8 gigabytes file, and the download speed on the Hugging Face website is not really the highest, which is why I will also give you my mega link where you can download this model a little bit faster. So once you have downloaded the pix to pix model, you're gonna select it, Control x to cut it, then you're gonna go into your Stable Diffusion Web UI folder, into Models, Stable Diffusion, and you're gonna put that model right here, exactly as if this was a normal Stable Diffusion model. And then you can launch Stable Diffusion. Then once you are inside Stable Diffusion, you're gonna click on Extensions, then click on Available, Load From, and here you should see a brand new extension called Instruct Pix to Pix. This is the extension that we need. So we're gonna come here and click on Install. Then you're gonna click on Installed, click on Check for Updates, make sure that we have the latest version, and then click on Apply and Restart UI. And now you should have a brand new tab called Instruct Pix to Pix. If you don't have this tab, I suggest that you completely relaunch Stable Diffusion. And once you relaunch Stable Diffusion, this tab should now be here. So now that you've installed the extension, now that you've installed the model, you're gonna come here in the Stable Diffusion checkpoint, and you're gonna select the Instruct pix to pix model. And now we can finally have some fun. So let's take for example an image of this redhead viking woman in a winter setting, and let's try for example to change the weather. So here in the prompt, we're gonna input a sentence like, what would it look like if it was raining? So as you can see, I'm not using some stable diffusion prompting here, I'm literally using some English words, I'm using full English sentences, as if I was using ChatGPT to describe what I want my future image to look like. I can also use some negative prompts if I really want to, but for this example I'm just gonna leave it at default, then scroll down, 
Here you have the amount of steps, the number of images that you want to make, the resolution, if you want to randomize or use a specific seed, the CG scale for your text, the CG scale for your image, and again if you want to use a fixed or a randomized CG scale. Now the CG scale for the text is basically how close the model should follow the prompt, so the higher the value the more it should follow what you've written right here, and the image CFG, the higher the value, the more it will look like this base image. So if for example your image does not change as much as you want to, you can decrease this image CFG scale and this will in turn make more changes to your initial image. But for this example I'm just gonna leave it at 1.5. And then I'm gonna click on generate. And as you can see this is the final result. It's not perfect but it's definitely look like there is a little bit more rain compared to the previous image. And as I said, if I want a higher effect of the image, I can come here and decrease the image CFG. Let's take for example 1.3 and then click on generate. And there you go, and now as you can see, the effect is now a little bit stronger. And if I choose for example a 1 for the image CFG and then click on generate, again as you can see, the effect is even stronger. But at the same time, we are losing a lot of details compared to the previous image. And if we come here and we increase the text CFG and then click on generate, now we have an even stronger effect, but at the same time, these characters start to look like less and less like our base character, which is probably not what we want. So instead, let's do something a little bit easier, and let's say that we want to change the color of our hair. So for the prompt, I'm gonna input something like, turn her into a blonde. I'm just gonna use the default CFG scale for both the text and the image, and then click on generate. And as you can see here, the result is pretty good. She is definitely looking a lot more blonde than before. And again, if we want a stronger effect, we can for example decrease the image CFG scale into 1.2 for example, and again click on generate. And this is the final result, I'm actually even gonna decrease it further, let's try 1 for the image CFG scale, and now we have definitely way more effect on the image. If you compare it to the previous one, this is the image with the CFG scale at 1.5, and this is what the CFG scale at 1. Definitely a huge difference. And we can do even more interesting transformation. For example, if I ask Pix to Pix to turn her into a man, and then I click on generate, as you can see, it has automatically transformed my beautiful redhead Viking woman into a very beautiful manly man. And of course, as I said, we can even decrease again the image CFG scale and increase the text CFG, and then click on generate. And now the effect is even stronger. This is really, really cool. Because now, thanks to this, you don't need to inpaint anything. Everything is done automatically. And the potential here is insane. You could take any image that you want and transform it into anything you want. No need for Photoshop, no need for inpainting. Everything is done automatically in a few seconds. You don't even need to be a pro stable diffusion prompter. You can just use a normal sentence as a prompt. And your language GPT model inside pix to pix will understand exactly what you want to do and will turn your words into reality. I mean, this is the future right here. And again, as I often say, this is only the beginning. Now here's for example a super cool trick that you can use. So let me choose a black and white image. This is a black and white photo of a rose. And I would like to turn this black and white image into a colored photo. So here in my prompt, I'm just gonna put digital colored photo of a rose leave everything by default, and then click on generate. And this is the final result. Sure, it's not perfect, but it's definitely something. This is a super cool trick that you can use to turn any black and white photo into a colored photo, without doing any manual editing. And that is a huge time saving if you're trying to do this manually. And you can do this with anything. Here's for example a photo of a field, so in my prompt I'm just gonna put digital colored photo of a field and then click generate. And this is the final result. Looks pretty good, looks pretty decent. Now of course you might not get exactly the result that you want with only one generation, which is why you can come here in the number of images, in number batches, and you can increase this number to the amount of images that you want to generate. Let's take for example 10. Let's generate 10 images using that prompt and then click on generate. And these are all the results that we got. Sure, it might not be the best ones. There is definitely a lot of green that is used in the image. But if you want to change that, you can definitely put something like green in the negative prompt and then try again. And there you go, indeed, there is no green in the image. Now, unfortunately, for some reason, it has completely uh, erased the tree and it made a completely different image. So maybe in this case, you might want to actually increase the image CFG scale, maybe like a 2.5 
and then maybe try again. And there we go, that is much better. And as you can see now, we have a bunch of images to choose from. And since we're only using 10 steps, this is a super fast generation. For me with my card, generating 10 images takes around 10 seconds, which is really really super fast. And as you can see, just like that, it has automatically converted a completely black and white photo into a colored photo. Now sure it's not exactly perfect, the resolution is a little low, but again this is definitely a work in progress. Now one thing that is very important to remember with the pix to pix model is that you need to be extremely precise with your prompting. Because you need to describe what you want in a very precise way. For example, let's say I want to turn her into an older woman, I cannot just put make her older, because if I click on generate, as you can see the image has barely moved. It is basically the exact same. And even if I, for example, decrease the image CG scale and then click on generate, it's definitely better, but the effect is really, really weak. But if I put, for example, turn her into an old woman and then click on generate, as you can see, the effect is now way, way stronger. Because in a way, our description is more precise. So do not hesitate to use a precise language to make sure that the GPT language model inside the pix to pix understand what you want. So here's for example another super cool trick that you can use, that is very very fun to do, is that you can transform any photo into a 3D render. And for this, in the prompt section, just put turn her into a 3D model, with everything by default, and then click on generate. And here is your 3D model. It actually looks really really good. It might not be perfect, but with a little photoshop, this will look really really good. So definitely try this out, especially if you like 3D render-like images. This is a pretty cool trick. And, of course, you can convert any image into a completely different style. For example, let's convert this image into a painting of Van Gogh. So here, in my prompt, I'm just gonna put turn her into a painting of Van Gogh, and then click on generate. And this is the final result. Now there is maybe a little too much green in my taste, so I think I'm probably gonna put green in the negative prompt. And let me try again. Alright, that's definitely better. Now again, of course, it's not perfect. You can definitely do something similar in the image to image tab, maybe even better. But this is just an example of what you can do with the pix to pix model. Now here's something pretty cool. You can actually turn any model that you have into a pix to pix model. Now currently this is not implemented into Stable Diffusion, but with a little hack you can make this work. And don't worry because I've already prepared everything for you. All you have to do is just click the link in the description down below, and you're gonna download the little file called extra.py. Then once you download this little file, you're gonna select it, Control X to cut it, then you're gonna go inside your Stable Diffusion Web UI folder, into modules, and you're gonna paste it right here. And then it's gonna ask you to replace the file in the destination, and you're gonna say yes. And then you're gonna come back and relaunch Stable Diffusion. Then, once you are inside Stable Diffusion, you're gonna go into the Checkpoint Merger tab, for the primary model, A, you're gonna select the Instruct pix to pix model. For the secondary model, B, this is the model that you want to convert. So let's say for example I want the Protogen V2.2. And the tertiary model, you're gonna put the 1.5. Then you can choose a custom name for your model. I'm gonna put Proto pix to pix For the multiplier, you're gonna put it at 1. Then you're gonna check Add Difference. You're gonna leave everything else by default. And then click on Merge. And as you can see, that successfully created a brand new pix to pix model. And of course, this model you can use inside the Instruct pix to pix tab. You're just gonna come here in the Stable Diffusion Checkpoint and choose the brand new proto pix to pix that we just created. And then, just like for the normal pix to pix model, you're gonna put your prompt. Let's say I want to turn her into a man with a long beard and black hair. I'm just gonna leave everything else by default and then click on Generate. And this is the final result. Looks pretty good. Not perfect but it looks pretty good. And now if we for example check the differences between the model that we just created and the base pix to pix model, I'm just gonna come and select the pix to pix model right here, fix the seed, and then click on generate. And this is the final result. Definitely not the same image compared to the model that we created. So this is the image that we got with the model that we created. This is a mix of the protogen model and the pix to pix model. And this is with the pix to pix model alone. So there is definitely a big difference. Personally, except the eyes, I do prefer this image that we created with the model that we merged. The man generated with the pix to pix model is maybe a little too feminine. Unless we come here in the image CFG scale and we decrease it, and then click on generate. And in that case, yes, we have a man that is way more manly. 
but we're also losing a little bit of resemblance compared to the base image. So again, it's kind of up to you to play around with the parameters. So there you go, we just got our hands on an amazing new model that will maybe change image editing forever. And you can do all of that without leaving stable diffusion. And that is really super cool. So definitely try it out because this is revolutionary. And there you go. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye.